the best choice here is e chordoma. Let's look at some of the image features that make sure it's e the best answer here. You can see there's a mass leach in the center within the clivus. There's a heterogeneous enhancement. This lesion is centered right in the midline, expanding our uh, involving the clivus. And the key thing here is that it's very bright on TT weighted sequence. So the buzzword description on board exam, think about a lesion involving the midline, clivus, and T2 hyperintensity. And that's pretty good for chordoma. Now, chordoma is a nodical remnant, is originated from the nodical remnants. So therefore, they tend to cluster right in the central location. Not always, but typically. And it can occur anywhere along the axial skeleton, so anywhere along the spine. The majority of them is going to occur either on the top or in the bottom. There's a higher percentage involving the sacral coccyx, so in the bottom, followed by sphenoaspital in the top, like in this case, and anywhere along the vertebral body, that's account for about 20%. The ones that involve in the bottom part tend to be older, and the one that involve in the upper part, the sphenoaspital synchondrosis or clivus, like in this case, tend to be a little bit younger. The differential diagnosis in this region, particularly involving the sphenoaspital region, the central scope base with T2 hyperintensity, it's basically come down to two things in board exam. That's chordoma versus chondrosarcoma. Both of them is around the same location, and both of them are relatively bright on T2-weighted sequence. Now, if you think about the central skull base, you can see the clivus in the midline. You have the sphenoacipital synchondrosis, and the petroclival fissure is off midline. So chordoma derived from the nodal core remnants within the sphenoacipital synchondrosis tend to be midline, whereas chondrosarcoma is derived from the petroclival fissure. So they tend to be eccentric in location. Sometimes chordoma can be eccentric, sometimes chondrosarcoma can be relatively midline. But as far as for board exam and generalization goes, I think this preference in location is important. So compared to chordoma versus chondrosarcoma on board exam, think of them, chordoma is a midline lesion and the chondrosarcoma is off midline. Now, both of them are relatively T2 bright, so that does not help you to distinguish between which one's which one, but they may help you distinguish between these two entities compared to other lesions. It is said that chordoma tend to have lower ADC compared to chondrosarcoma, but in reality, unless you can compare them side by side, sometimes it's difficult to use that information to make that differentiation. Another buzzword description on board exam, as well as very helpful hint, you see this classic RIN and R calcification. That is pretty good for chondrosarcoma. So think about this buzzword for your core exam. Uh, chordoma midline, chondrosarcoma off midline, both of them are brown T2, and chondrosarcoma on CT have this RIN and R calcification. Example of a chondrosarcoma in a relatively young patient. You can see on T1 weighted image, it can be heterogeneous enhancement. In this case, it's relatively avidly enhancing. And T2 weighted sequence, notice that the chondrosarcoma just like chordoma is relatively bright on T2. If you have CT, this is very helpful in that you can see the classic Ren and Arc calcification, and that is better for chondrosarcoma. So this case right here, eccentric, bright on T2, Ren and Arc calcification, that is chondrosarcoma instead of chordoma. What about other choices that's not good for this case? Optic pathway glioma. This is young patient with optic pathway glioma. A patient has NF1. On T2-weighted sequence, they are not as bright as chordoma or chondrosarcoma, but you can have cystic changes within, and that can, of course, be relatively bright. They can either heterogeneously enhancing, sometimes no enhancement. If this is pilocytic astrocytoma, they tend to enhance. Notice that it tends not to involve in the clivus, and it is centered within the optic chiasm involving the optic pathway. So the location is not quite chondrosarcoma or chordoma. What about pituitary macroanoma? This is a case of pituitary macroanoma. 
even though a more, more aggressive one can extend in or erode into the clivus. Natural tendency of pituitary macroanoma is expansion of the cell uh, with a supercellular extension with the classic Soman configuration. The key here is that you should not be able to distinguish between the normal pituitary gland with the macroanoma. Whereas with chondrosarcoma or with chordoma, unless it's large that's causing complete compression of the pituitary gland, you can typically see a pituitary gland that's separated from this particular lesion, chordoma. What about choice C, olfactory neuroblastoma or esthetial neuroblastoma? This is a lesion that's derived from the olfactory epithelium right around the equipiform plate. So the natural tendency is extension below and break through the equipiform plate and tend to present with bilateral appearance or dumbbell appearance lesion. They typically enhance heterogeneously and the location is often far away from the clivus. And on titillated sequence, by the way, they have this tendency to develop these cystic changes at the margin of the tumor in the intracranial compartment. So its location center within the cryptophon plate is not that of Vodoma. Ignore the cystic component. The lesion itself is not bright like Chordoma or chondrosarcoma, has this evil gray appearance. So overall, the best choice is Chordoma due to its midnight location and T2 hyperintensity. That is all for this head and neck case number 12. Thanks for your attention and good luck on your board exam.